The U.S. energy grid being strained to the max here as you could see here a massive weeks-long heat wave will intensify this weekend and push temperatures close to 130 degrees in some areas, pushing our nation's energy grid to the max. Take a listen. Tonight, from coast to coast, Mother Nature's onslaught is unrelenting. Overnight, multiple tornadoes touching down around Chicago. Right here. Right, yep, right, right there. there. Oh, my God. Wreaking havoc at the O'Hare oh International Airport and leaving a trail of destruction with dozens of homes damaged. All of a sudden, it was going all around. It was blowing all over. So there was, like, no way to go to protect yourself from it. NBC's Maggie Vespa is there. We're here in McCook, Illinois, where if you come into room five, you can see the roof of this motel is completely gone. Here's that same shot from above. The owner says, thankfully, no one was inside when the storm came through. Over the road. Bro. And today, road flash right flooding in Mississippi, triggered by torrential rains. Multiple roads and buildings submerged. My store is currently underwater. This comes as more than 84 million Americans sweat through triple-digit temperatures, triggered in part by a deadly heat dome that only tightens its grip on the southwest. In Texas today, the demand for electricity reaching its highest point ever. After 2021's rolling blackouts, there's fresh concern for that state's power grid. Miami now 33 consecutive days with a heat index over 100 degrees. And Sin City is scorching. Las Vegas poised to tie its all-time heat record 117 degrees this weekend. On the Strip, even the pavement is dangerous. It is super hot out here, and so, like, the bottom of my shoes, I'm worried that it's going to get stuck to the concrete and melt. Nevada's only level one trauma center is reporting a troubling rise in severe burns from the superheated streets. The pavement can heat up to 160 to 170 degrees, and all it takes is a couple of seconds of your skin being exposed to that to create a second degree burn. 73-year-old Air Force veteran Christopher Malcolm was waiting for the bus when he suddenly felt faint. I was feeling overheated, and so I sat down on a sidewalk. Unable to get up, the hot pavement seared through his pants, causing third-degree burns, which required surgery. I feel lucky to be alive. Yet another casualty of the brutal summer heat that has the potential to be the deadliest yet. Aaron, that's an incredible reminder of how dangerous the streets can be. All week we've been talking about this brutal heat. I know you're there in Las Vegas tonight. Show us just how hot it is there. Yeah, that's right, Tom. I have an infrared thermometer right here, so let's check it out. Right now the street is registering in at... 162 degrees Fahrenheit, and experts say that's hot enough to sear in seconds. Yeah, and just a few days ago, if you think this isn't crazy enough, at an Ed Sheeran concert in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 17 people were hospitalized. Two people went into cardiac arrest from heat-related uh, heat uh, exhaustion, heat stroke, and it was only in the 80s there, but very, very humid. I'm here in Ohio, the neighbor of uh, Pennsylvania, and it has been extremely hot and humid for Ohio. Keep that in mind, it's not in 100 plus temperatures, but it is hot and humid. So I can relate, you know, if you're there in a concert with thousands of other people next to you, I can, I can picture it. You can let me know your thoughts here in the comments. But uh, yeah, it's one of those days where your air conditioning is on 24-7. If you're there at a concert, even with it being, say, 85 degrees, very humid, and tens of thousands of people next to you, I can understand how maybe 17 people could uh, collapse from heat exhaustion. You could let me know your thoughts here in the comments. In fact, let me know down below in the comment section how hot and maybe how humid it has been, where you are and what city and state you're in. I'm sure it's maybe not hot everywhere, um, but it has been pretty hot where I am. And, you know, this also comes here as, you know, we're seeing a lot of headlines like this in the Wall Street Journal. Can the power grid handle a wave of new electric vehicles? as millions of cars are getting built by pretty much all the manufacturers now at this point. Um, 
all the major, major manufacturers are building electric vehicles. And you've seen in that video that Texas just hit their highest level of power consumption ever. As we're hitting these high heat indexes and, um, you know, we're growing more and more and more power hungry, which means more power outages, more level of worry for our power grids. And it actually makes us more vulnerable to, you know, cyber attacks. We've seen Russia and both China recently and well, Russia especially continuously trying to cyber attack our infrastructure. Russia has previously attacked our power grids when they're able to get in. This presents a security risk as well because, you know, all these things have, you know, computer chips in them. Pretty, I mean, I don't know about all of them, but a lot of them are online so that, you know, our government and the power grids can access them online when they need to. And this also presents a risk for our country. Uh, you can kind of see the, the level of uh, concern with all of this stuff, right? Um, yeah, I mean, even your thermostats nowadays you are online in some cases. You know, you can just change the thermostat up and down. It's not really quite a concern really for hackers as much, right? You know, they're not really trying to access your personal thermostat really as much. But you can kind of see the... Uh, the concern there with a lot of this stuff, it's, it's a security risk, right? Yeah, so just take a look at some of these headlines here that I've just brought up here. It's not just elections. Russia hacked the U.S. electric grid. This is back from 2018. And it may be just the first phase of a bigger attack. This has already happened here in the United States. That's just number one. Number two. Russian hackers tried to bring down Ukraine's power grid to help the invasion. Again, when war starts, this is one of the first things our adversaries will try to do, bring down our power grid. And again, we go back here to number one, they've already done this in certain circumstances here in the U.S. Number three, this is from the Texas Tribune here. Okay, this is in March of 2022. Okay, just last year. Texas power grid, energy sectors facing elevated Russian cyber threats during the war in Ukraine. They're targeting the U.S. as well. Utility companies and key oil and gas transportation hubs on high alert as Russian hackers have been probing energy infrastructure's digital networks for weak points. So they have seen and they know they can see through the Internet logs and, you know, where the IP addresses and stuff that Russian Internet addresses, IP addresses were coming and looking through our databases, through our networks coming from Russia. OK, number four, Russia's hacked into America's electric grid. Here's why securing it is hard. It's a vast, vast network. Think about how many different electrical grid and different data points and all sorts of it says here Russia has infiltrated infiltrated critical infrastructure like American power plants, water facilities and gas pipelines. There's all sorts of different things to secure. Next one, what happens when Russian hackers come for the electrical grid? This is from last year. Emergency training at a restrictive facility off Long Island has aimed to minimize and potential, uh, potentially catastrophic events of a cyber attack on U.S. power infrastructure. Yeah, there's a lot here. Researchers uncover Russia-linked malware that could immobilize electric grids. You know, and this is sometimes why I wonder when I, I see, you know, U.S. citizens Sometimes in the comment section saying, oh, Russia's going to win the war. And they're like, they're like Russian sympathizers. Sometimes I, I, I wonder why they're like rooting for Russia to win the war. I, it's almost like I, I, I can't understand what's going on there. Why they're like rooting for Russia to win the war. 
like like Russia's our friend or or something. Like, Russia has been attacking us for decades in instances like this. So I, that's why I like to show you guys this stuff in black and white. Russia is not our friend and hasn't been for a long time. You guys can let me know your thoughts here on this. But I mean, to see it there with your own eyes. I'll keep you up to date here with everything going on here in our country and around the world on a daily basis. Thanks for liking and please share these videos so other people can see this information. I'll keep you up to date. Click here to see three big changes coming to Social Security. Or click here to see more troops and U.S. boots on the ground coming right now. Click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.